good morning. I got a little horse this morning. All this pollen blowing in here and everything, and it's got me sound like I've got the croup or something, but uh, it's nothing serious. And uh, if the uh, winds will go down and the humidity will go up, it'll cure itself. But anyway, I went to the mailbox yesterday and I had a notice of a package in the uh, uh, boxes over to the right and the key in there and I opened it and there was this box in there. And uh, I knew I hadn't ordered anything so uh, I just had to figure out who had sent me what. So I'm going to open it for you now. Well, it, it doesn't have a return address or name or anything on it. It has an origin of a uh, zip code here, 77612. And uh, it's to me and this address here, but it doesn't have anything from anyone. But it's a fairly heavy box, and it cost sixteen dollars and a quarter to mail it priority mail, so they must have really wanted to send me something. I'm going to open it here. Oh, by the way, I got my third Pfizer shot about a week ago. So I've had three, all three COVID shots. <coughs> I've also had my shingle shots and my flu shot. <coughs> oh, here we got it. Sorry you did not receive this on your birthday. Had allergies and couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I know what you're going through. I'm going to have to fun reading all your past, all your posts that I have missed. Have a blessed day. And it's from my clan, friend across the miles, Clara. Uh, she is a, a nice lady who has sent me several gifts and been a subscriber from almost day one. And she sent me a coffee pot that her dripolator that her husband used and when he was alive. And I made a dripolator coffee. In fact, I made a uh, video on it. And in here is a box. Ooh, it's heavy. of moon pies. Moon pies, those have been around for years. They were invented in 1917, that makes them over 100 years old. And 12 single-decker pies, that weigh 24 ounces. <clears throat> when I was a kid, these were a rare treat if we could get a dime together to buy one. Uh, they were they were a dime and the rest of the candy bars were a nickel. We could make enough to uh, get a candy bar by picking up pop bottles and deposit and sell them. But uh, it was hard to put a dime together when I was a kid. But. And she sent me two pounds of them. You know, I've, I've received some of the greatest gifts for my birthday. 
this year. Uh, it has really been good to me. I guess it's hate trying to make make up for the miserable times I had otherwise, losing my wife and everything like that. But uh, I'm hanging in there. Moon pies. Now that is a gift that keeps on giving. I don't know how long this two dozen of them is going to last. I know it's a dozen, but I'm going to meter them out and, and just on special occasions. Uh, I won't go through all the nutrition and everything like that, but if you've never had a moon pie, you missed one of the better parts of life. Uh, oh, Claire also sent us uh, lap blankets back oh, three or four or five years ago with her name's embroidery on it. and. I do wish that uh, I could get her mailing address and phone number so I could send something to her. Uh, but she's, I guess, a very private person. And, uh, but I'm gonna figure out some way to send her something that she would use and appreciate. So I've now opened my last, I guess it's my last birthday present. And since this video is going to be kind of short, I'm going to tell you a short story at the end of it. In the Army, they have, uh, everybody has a regular job of some sort they're assigned to do. And then occasionally they will be called in for what they call details, extra details. Uh, for the lower ranking people, it could be uh, KP, uh, guard duty, uh, mowing grass, uh, weed control, whatever was the situation, maybe even painting uh, buildings or something. But you, it was just an extra duty that you were expected to do. And as you got up in rank, well, uh, you were expected to do higher level jobs. And at a certain point, uh, a sergeant or above, which I was at the time in Korea, uh, you were in charge of the details. And one day I went by the detail board and there was my name with three names under it. And I said, okay, that can only be one thing is a guard detail. So I dropped to the orderly room to pick up my orders, what it was. And uh, <clears throat> we were up toward the uh, DMZ where the shooting had more or less stopped and we were doing small jobs up there like clearing areas for mass units and things like that. But one of the of them was, uh, there's little mountains around there about five, six, seven hundred feet high. And the Air Force was wanting uh, radar sites on top of them. And, uh, so our job was to send the bulldozer right there, doze out a road around, kind of spiraling up the mountain to the top and level off the top of it big enough to park your radar truck. And it was one of those and uh, of course they could only work during the day and they weren't going to haul the bulldozer back at night and they had to put a card on it or uh, infiltrators would come down there and steal the fuel out of it and. Uh, damage it and things like that. Couldn't very well steal a bulldozer though. <clears throat> but uh, we were to guard this bulldozer. That was working out there. And they hauled me and my three 
guards out there in a uh, small flat flatbed truck and brought the bulldozer operator and uh, his mechanic pack and uh, our job was to guard it from six in the morning, six in the evening till six the next morning and uh, <clears throat> uh, they had a square what they call a four-man tent pitched there for shelter for the guards and needed because it was starting to rain, light rain when we got there. So I mounted the first troop and told him, uh, walk guard on this bulldozer for two hours and then come in and wake your replacement and he'll go out for two and uh, don't wake me unless there's a problem and then let me know. And this tent is square, 16 foot square with one pole in the middle and a pole on each side and the ropes on it. And there had some folding cots in there and uh, I went to bed a little later and sound asleep and along uh, toward midnight I was jarred awake by it. Sergeant of the Guard, BAM! Sergeant of the Guard, BAM! Sergeant of the Guard, BAM! <clears throat> I jumped up, grabbed my helmet with one hand and put it on my head and my rifle in the other one and sprinted for the door and ran right into the center pole of the tent and knocked it down and down came the tent on top of the other two guys and me and we were fighting over our way out of there and, and this fool out there in the dark was yelling, Sergeant of the Guard, BAM! The only saving thing, his M1 only held eight rounds, and when he ran out of them, he couldn't shoot anymore. And I finally got out there, and I said, What is it? And he said, I heard something. And I said, Well, you, did you see anything? No, it's dark. I just heard it. <laughs> I said, I looked around and couldn't find any dead bodies or anything else. And... <clears throat> So it kind of disrupted that night's sleep. We had to get the tent back up in the dark. And the only lights we had was flashlights and finished up the, the guard duty that the next morning at uh, six o'clock and they got out there and the mechanic on the bulldozer says, he shot two holes in the radiator and one in the fuel tank. So they are gonna have to put it on deadline and sent mechanics out there to fix it. But that's my quick story of my guard duty in uh, Korea. Of course, I had many other duties, but that, that's the one that stuck in my mind. <clears throat> so, God bless America, God bless Texas, and where else would you find something like this in the sign? Bye.